Hey everybody, Pastor Justin here. Welcome to day two Bible lesson in our uh, virtual VBS this year. Uh, so hopefully you enjoyed day one with all your Bible lessons and your crafts and your science experiments, missions, all of that fun stuff. So uh, I'm going to jump right in here and today we are looking at uh, a passage of scripture that maybe you might have heard of before. It has to deal with uh, a man, a big fish, and throw up. All right, and so maybe you already know exactly where we're going today, but before we get there, I want to hit a couple key points uh, that we're talking about today, and that is this, that God is almighty, okay? God is almighty, and our focus is that God is almighty. He is all-knowing, all-powerful, and all-present. Now, there's a couple words that go along with that that we're going to talk about in a minute, and they start with the letter O, okay? As you start thinking about that, maybe you can uh, already guess what those words are that start with an O that we're going to talk about. Uh, but we also have something else that goes with our lesson today that is this, that nothing is too hard for God because He is all-knowing, all-powerful, okay? And Jeremiah chapter 32 verse 27 says this. I'm going to read this for you. It says, Behold... I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is anything too hard for me? Again, say that with me. Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is anything too hard for me? All right? And so we're, we're looking at this in the light of God is almighty. And because God is almighty, those three O words that we're talking about... Uh, the first one is omniscient, okay? Omniscient means God knows all. And the second one is uh, omnipotent. God is all-powerful. And the third one is omnipresent. God is all-present, meaning He is everywhere at all the time at the same time. Not just that He's everywhere, but He's everywhere at the same time time, which is pretty crazy to think about because we can only be in one place at a time. Maybe you've even thought that before when you got like your room to clean and chores to do. You wish you could be in multiple places at once, but you can only be in that one place at one time. And so the Bible is full of all of these accounts that show us all of those words that God is omnipotent, He's omniscient, and He's omnipresent. Like there, There's many different accounts, but what we want to look at today is a, a story in the Bible, an account found in the book of Jonah. All right, Just like I said in the beginning that we were going to talk about, uh, and maybe you guessed that we were talking about Jonah, we are looking at him today. And this account in the Bible took, took place around 800 B.C., okay? Uh, so, so we're going to look at a couple things here on how Jonah and the account of Jonah fits into God being all mighty, okay? Now, before we get started, Jonah, we have to understand that he was a prophet. Now, because he was a prophet and every word that he was going to speak comes truth, let's dig into God's word and see some things that's going to happen here in Jonah. I want to read to you the first four verses here of Jonah chapter 1, and it says, Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah, the son of Amity, saying, Arise, Go to Nineveh, the great city, and call out against it, for their evil has come up before me. But Jonah rose to flee to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. He went down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare and went down, and in, and went down into it, into the boat that is, to go with them to Tarshish, away from the presence of the Lord. Now catch this. He's trying to flee the presence of the Lord, but you can't flee the presence of the Lord, which plays into that omnipresence, that He is everywhere. And in verse 4 says this, But the Lord hurled a great wind upon the sea, and there was a mighty tempest on the sea, so that the ship threatened to break up. And in that portion right there, we see that God is in control, and He is all-powerful. All powerful. He is omnipotent, okay? He is in control and all powerful. Now, we also see here as we read through uh, some of the rest of this in verse 5, it says that this, then the mariners were afraid. Now, these were professional 
sailors, okay? And they were afraid of this storm that God created. It frightened them. And it said they started to hurl the co cargo that was in uh, the ship into the sea to lighten its load. But Jonah had gone down into the inner part of the ship and had laid down and was fast asleep. So the captain came and said to him, What do you mean, you sleeper? Arise, go out uh, and call out to your God. Perhaps the God will give a thought to us that we may not perish. Now I want you to catch this right here. These men were professional sailors, and they were scared of this storm that God created. They were not believers in the one true God, but they go to Jonah and they say, get up, what are you doing? You need to call out to your God because maybe he will give us safety and he will not let us perish. You see, they were calling out to many different gods and just hoping that one was true. Okay, and so we're going to keep going here. And it says, And they said to one another, Come let us cast lots that we may know on whose account this evil has come up to us. So they cast lots and they fell on Jonah. Then they said to him, Tell us on whose account this evil has come up upon. What is your occupation? And where do you come from? What is your country? And of what people are you? And he said to them, I am a Hebrew, and I fear the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the dry land. Then the men were exceedingly afraid, even more afraid than they were of the storm. And they said to him, What is it that you have done? For the men knew that he was fleeing from the presence of the Lord because he had told them. Then they said to him, What shall we do to you that the sea may quiet down for us? For the sea grew more and more temperate. And he said to them, Pick me up and hurl me into the sea, and then the sea will quiet down for you. For I know it is because of me that there is a great tempest has come upon you. And so Jonah himself, he says, Hey, you know what? Just throw me into the sea. And if you do that, the sea will calm down for you because I know that I serve the God that is in control. He is everywhere. He's all powerful. And if you do this, he can stop the storm. Now, maybe he thought it was because if he threw me into the sea that I would die, that I would not survive it. But Jonah cannot get away from the presence of God. Now, what happens next is playing into God's all-powerfulness and his almightiness. God himself appoints a great fish to swallow Jonah up, and he ends up in the belly of this great fish, and he's down in the depths of the sea, and Jonah is crying out to God, crying out to God. He's praying to God that he would be saved from this pit. Why am I in this place and, and, and he, this fish is on its journey that God has appointed. And in the middle of that, God responds to this prayer that Jonah has. And he tells the fish to throw Jonah up. And he throws him up onto the seashore. And where does he go from there? That Jonah has nowhere else to go but to Nineveh and do what God asks. And the city of Nineveh, get this, boys and girls, because Jonah did what the Almighty God asked, the city of Nineveh turned to God. This nasty, wicked place who was full of sin turned to God. This isn't the only place in the Bible where you hear about God being all-knowing and powerful and present. In Psalms chapter 139, you see this as well. And here just in a little bit, I'm going to give you a challenge with Psalms chapter 139. But what I want you to take away today is this. That even in the midst of the hardest thing that God could ever ask you to do, we need to understand that He is all-knowing, all-powerful, and all-present. And God will be there with you. He may not be asking you to travel to a different city to do something, but He may be asking you to tell your neighbor about Him. He may be asking you to share Jesus with your grandma or grandpa, or with your aunt or your uncle or your cousin, somebody on your ball team. He may be asking you to do something that's a little uncomfortable to where you are in here and now. But trust that God is there with you, and just like he was with Jonah, that he will be right alongside of you. Now, Jonah continued to make some not-so-good choices even after he went to Nineveh. But I want us to hold on to the fact that God is all-knowing, all-powerful, and all-present. 
Now, I mentioned Psalms 139. In Psalms 139, I want you to do this today, boys and girls. I want you to go and read Psalms 139, verses 1 through 18, and I want you to find the five statements in that, cha in that chapter that shows you that God is all-knowing, all-present, and all-powerful. And while you do that, don't forget that God is almighty. I love you guys. Hope you're having a great time with VBS, even though it's a little different. And can't wait to see you tomorrow. God bless.